This program is brought to you by Kuruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of our renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. This is Deepa and I'm going to present the English version of the Tamil video. In the last video, I explained about the characteristics of the Pisces house. I explained the effects of different planets in the house of Pisces and taught you much more intricacies. In this video, I'm going to explain the effects of planets such as Jupiter and Venus in the house of Pisces and I'm going to teach you some rare concepts of astrology. The house of Pisces is a sign of duality. If only you observe very keenly and closely the position of the planets in the Pisces sign which represents the duality, you can make accurate predictions. The planet that I'm going to explain first of all is Jupiter. This is the own house of the planet Jupiter. The Mool Tricone house of Jupiter is the house which is in the lower half of the zodiac which is Sagittarius. The house that is owned by Jupiter which is in the upper half of the natural zodiac is Pisces. This is the twelfth house of the natural zodiac. Therefore, when Jupiter resides in the twelfth house of the natural zodiac in its own house, what does it mean? It means the native of Pisces ascendant is extremely good. Definitely the native will have a good conduct and of course can be very innocent. Jupiter itself is innocent and good. If you are a person who wishes that everybody have to be well, then Jupiter is the whole reason working behind such characteristics and one has to definitely make such a selfless wish from the heart from the mind that everybody has to do well then definitely Jupiter is the reason behind that there is a difference between what you say and what you think if somebody really wishes that everybody has to do well then they reflect the character of Jupiter. Whether it is a curse or whether it is a blessing, when it comes from the deep heart with a lot of emotions and with a lot of sincerity, then such thoughts have more power. If someone blesses you wholeheartedly that you have to do well, then it is delivered by Jupiter. Jupiter is very strong in the 12th house in the Pisces, 12th house of the natural zodiac. When Jupiter resides in Pisces, then the native will definitely reflect these characteristics and when Jupiter resides in the house of Pisces and the native is an ascendant of 5th house or 7th house or 9th house to the house of Pisces, then the native is considered to be very fortunate. Let me repeat the point. When Jupiter resides in the house of Pisces, then the fifth house to the Jupiter, that is the native of Cancer ascendant, the seventh house to the Jupiter, that is the native of Virgo ascendant, and ninth house to the Jupiter, that is the native of Scorpio ascendant, are considered to be very fortunate especially when Jupiter is not affected while it resides in the 12th house then this brings a lot of auspiciousness that is the aspect of the Jupiter brings all the auspiciousness 
when jupiter has connection with the ascendant or when the jupiter resides in the ascendant with big bala or when jupiter resides in fifth house or seventh house or in the ninth house to the ascendant then the native will live his or her life in a very honest way in a lawful way whenever a person undergoes the major planetary period of jupiter based on the significance of jupiter the native will intend to live life in a very honest and lawful way this is the way the native will live his whole life this particular point is repeated a lot of times in our granthas the connection of jupiter to the ascendant is important the ascendant should be subhatva with the connection of jupiter and venus therefore when native is pisces ascendant itself and jupiter resides in pisces thus attaining digbala as well that is directional strength as well then in any situation the native will not fall down or will not decline in their life of course you have to check the major planetary period and minor planetary period that is dasha and antar dasha having said all these when jupiter resides in the house of pisces the person reflects the characteristics of jupiter what is the significance of jupiter spiritualism justice judiciary system banking sector preaching all these will be rendered by jupiter that resides in the house of pisces when the house of pisces becomes the second or the 10th house to the ascendant then the native will incline to choose the profession such as teacher lecturer preacher or the person might work in the banking sector in any situation when jupiter gets connected with the second house and with the 10th house the person will be working in banking sector or a teacher or will be in the professions like preaching or even the person may work as a lawyer and then will subsequently become a judge i often mention in my videos that in one's natal chart when jupiter and saturn have connection with the second house and the 10th house and when they remain subhatva then the person will work as a lawyer or a judge I have often mentioned this point in my videos therefore all these will be rendered by jupiter when it resides in the house of pisces which has got a lot of strength even when jupiter is retrograde then jupiter will render its significance because i have told that there is not much difference when jupiter becomes retrograde when it has own house status the own house retrograde will not give any worse effects the next planet that i'm going to explain is venus venus becomes exalted in the house of pisces venus gets exalted in the pisces house that indicates pleasures in the natural zodiac rahu is a planet which is secondary to venus in giving all the pleasures Venus is the planet that gives all pleasures. Venus is the significator of carnal pleasures. As per the age, you have to make predictions. The very first significance of Venus is carnal pleasure. The planet that introduces a man to a woman and woman to a man is Venus. I have mentioned in my article Ungal Jadagam Yoga Jadagama about the exaltation of Venus in the house of Pisces. When Venus resides in the house of Pisces, such a person will be a true lover. This is the most significant of the placement of Venus in Pisces. When Venus is exalted in the house of Pisces, without any Pabatva connection at all, then these sort of people 
will dedicate even their own soul and life for their love. The one who dedicates their own life for the lover is signified by the position of Venus in this house. It will be a true or unconditional love, not even expecting carnal pleasures. You would have observed a boy or a girl who always wishes the best for their lover even though the lover does not agree to marry or break the relationship. Such a boy or girl who wishes the well-being of the lover, who abandoned indeed, will have exalted Venus in Pisces without any Pabatwa connection. Sometimes a man or a girl will start to hate the lover when he or she cheats. Such hatred will be totally missing for those whose Venus is exalted in the house of Pisces. In case if this quality is missing in a person in whose natal chart Venus is exalted in Pisces, then you have to understand that Venus is Pabatwa here. When a boy or girl spouse or lover breaks up the relationship and if the boy or girl gets agitated, fights and curses the other, then Venus is Pabatwa in the house of Pisces. I am explaining to you the significance of the planet and how it will behave under different conditions. If you find a behavior contrary to what I say, that means there is a connection of a malefic planet with Venus, connection of Saturn or Rahu or Moon without light energy. Venus will not get Pabatva merely by residing in the star of Uttaratadi, that is Uttarabhadra. The concept of Pabatva is not based on the Nakshatra Lord. If only Saturn aspects the house of Pisces by the third aspect or seventh aspect or ninth aspect or it resides in the house of Pisces itself, then Venus will become Pabatva. Please note that the Pabatva of Venus will reverse all the good effects of the Venus that I explained so far. When Venus is exalted in the house of Pisces without any Pabatva, then the person will be a true icon for the true love. The person will always wish the goodness whom they love and they will definitely respect the opposite gender the women a lot if the native is a man. These sort of people can understand the women very well. The women also will like this person a lot. This person will be a winner of the hearts of the women. I always say that in a natal chart of the person, the Venus and Jupiter should not lose its strength, especially in ladies chart, if the Venus and Jupiter loses strength, it will not deliver benefits. In general, in anybody's natal chart, if Venus and Jupiter have good strength, then they are considered to be very fortunate. Venus can reside alone in the house of Pisces once in every 60 or 70 years because Venus also gets afflicted as it always travels along with the sun. Venus always travels with the sun and Mercury. When Mercury is in conjunction with Venus, the Mercury gets debilitated and it reduces the exaltation strength of the Venus. Venus gets exalted and based on the degree of conjunction with Mercury, it transfers its strength to Mercury. The great sage Kalidasa had clearly made a point in Uttrakala Amrita. He mentioned that even when an exalted planet is in conjunction with a debilitated planet, the exalted planet attains Shunyabala. You have to definitely consider all these points when exalted Venus is in conjunction with the debilitated Mercury in the house of Pisces. 
in an overview you might miss to notice these points when you see venus gets exalted you would like to make predictions based on the exaltation status but when venus is in conjunction with mercury that is when the exalted venus is in conjunction with debilitated mercury you have to make predictions in such a way that as if mercury gets exalted in this case you have to consider how mercury got exalted this is the lesson taught by our math teacher when we were young imagine the mathematical problem that our teacher taught us during our childhood days for a mathematical problem of 10 minus 7 we write 10 in the first line and 7 below that and we cannot detect 7 from 0 so the teacher will insist on borrowing the next number and then subtract the 7 from it this is the way the teacher had taught us right astrology is a very similar concept when an exalted planet is in conjunction with a debilitated planet the exalted planet transfers its own strength to the debilitated planet and makes it strong Having said all these when Venus is exalted in the house of Pisces and resides alone it is good Once in 50 or 60 years Venus will reside alone in the house of Pisces and gets exalted When Venus gets exalted in the house of Pisces for the native of Libra ascendant it will be in the 6th house to the ascendant and for the native of taurus ascendant that is rishabh ascendant when venus gets exalted in the house of pisces it will be in the 11th house to the ascendant the ascendant lord itself gets exalted in the 11th house i have demonstrated the natal chart of a person who is a great business magnet whose venus is in exaltation status in the house of pisces who is a native of taurus ascendant when venus is not affected by any planet then definitely such native will be born with silver spoon that is even when they were born they will hold a silver spoon in their hand which indicates indeed the prosperity of the family as per the english proverb when a venus is not affected by any planet then the person will be born with a silver spoon and provided provided venus is not pabatwa when venus has no connection with any other planet when it resides alone and gets exalted it can give tremendous benefits venus is capable of giving 50% of the benefits that jupiter can render whatever jupiter delivers venus can give 50% of such benefits because venus is depicted by shukracharya who is half blind whatever the jupiter that resides in the house of cancer delivers venus can deliver half of the benefits when it resides in the house of pisces you know i'm explaining the levels of subhatva of the planets i'm going to publish more videos regarding different levels of subhatva for mars mercury and many more planets i indeed thought of publishing that particular concept as a premiere video but now i'm planning to publish it as a general video on youtube itself i'm going to explain in a few of my future videos how to identify the level of subhatva or pabatwa of the planets in a natal chart in any situation when venus resides in the house of pisces it is favorable even for the native of pisces ascendant when venus resides in the ascendant house itself attaining digbala that is directional strength it is favorable of course venus is the house lord of the 8th house despite that it is good definitely the person will have longevity there will be only certain shortcomings when a malafic becomes the lord of the inauspicious house 
it will throw a big stone on the head and it will make severe bruises. Whereas when the benefic becomes the lord of the inauspicious house, it will throw a sack of flowers which is of same weight of the stone and it will make contusions. When a natural benefic becomes the functional malefic for a particular ascendant, then it throws a sack of flowers that is as heavy as a stone and causes contusions but not open bruises. Whereas when a malefic becomes a functional malefic for a particular ascendant, then it throws a boulder or a big stone and makes the person to bleed by severe cuts and wounds etc. Therefore, please try to understand Subhatva, Pabhatva and the significance of the planets. When Libra is the 8th house and Venus becomes the lord of the 8th house for the native of Pisces ascendant, of course, it can become exalted and for the native of Sagittarius ascendant, Venus becomes the lord of the 6th house that is lord of Taurus and still it can become exalted in the house of Pisces. In this case, what would happen? Venus will affect the delivery of carnal pleasures to the native. How will Venus affect the native? Through its significance and the house effects. Here Venus will completely give a jiva karaka, that is materialistic things, luxurious houses, luxurious cars, if only Venus is strong, it can deliver all these pleasures to a person because Jupiter does not have any desires. Jupiter is completely without desires. Whereas Venus is the significator of enjoying the luxuries. If Jupiter is strong, they will not buy a car. If Jupiter is strong in one's natal chart, they will earn the properties they will guard the properties and they will pass it to the next generation. The person in whose natal chart Jupiter is very strong will be wearing a rugged cloth until the end of his life. You have to definitely understand the significance of the planets. You have to understand how a planet can deliver its significance based on its status in the natal chart. If Jupiter is strong in one's natal chart, then the person will be free from desires. The person would not be inclined to enjoy the comforts and luxuries for himself. The person in whose natal chart the Jupiter is strong will eat only curd rice, which is very humble food, will not spend much on food, will be very frugal, but will save the property, will save the earnings and will be happy to pass it to the next generation. If you see such a person, Jupiter will be very strong in the natal chart. The person will also earn money in a very honest, lawful way. He will not even spare money for buying a costly chapel. He'll be happy to buy a 10 rupees chapel. After he passes away or during his lifetime, his grandson or the grandchildren will buy a footwear worth rupees 10k. His grandchildren will even travel by air, by flight, just to merely get the best footwear. Venus is the planet that leads the native to enjoy the comforts and luxuries. It is the significator for enjoying the luxuries and comforts. Therefore, in any situation, even when Venus remains Pabhatva, but if it has got strength, it is good. In certain situations, of course, this is beneficial. But what it will do is contrary to this. Venus will definitely spoil the Jiva Karaga, that is, it will spoil the relationship that it signifies. It will spoil the Jiva Karaga and it will deliver the Ajiva Karaka. What would happen when Venus is exalted in the house of Pisces 
and remains as Pabatwa. It will definitely deliver all the greatest luxuries and lavishness in life. It will deliver very luxurious life, extravagant life, very good vehicles, very sophisticated vehicles, very high quality houses, women, the relationship with women and all the benefits from the women as per the house effects in your natal chart. You will get a good wife, good sister, a good friend among the girl circle when your Venus is very strong in your natal chart. You will also get a very good daughter. You have to connect Venus with the house effects and you have to understand this. Therefore, when Venus gets exalted, you have to check for which house to the ascendant it is the Lord. Having said all these, everything will get changed when Venus resides in the house of Pisces as Pabatwa. In addition to this, Venus will give carnal pleasures. In which fashion it will deliver carnal pleasures? If you want to check if this person will be much attracted to the opposite gender, you have to check the major planetary period or minor planetary period of the planet. When Venus gets exalted, there is some complexity. How to identify whether this person is good or bad? It is completely a variable one. It depends on one's culture. Let me share an intricacy about Venus. Whether it is good or bad, it is totally based on the culture. 30 years ago, the world was not globalized as it is now. There was no globalization of the world. In another part of the world, that is in the opposite pole to India, a mother will be concerned if her daughter does not have any boyfriend post-puberty or 13 years of age or if a daughter does not stay with her boyfriend during night. Consequently, the mother takes the daughter to a doctor, a psychologist. The mother will be concerned that her daughter is different from other girls and she is not inclined to be attracted towards men because of the reason that she stays on Saturdays and Sundays at home. In contrast, in India, the parents take more care in guarding the daughter post 13 years or post puberty of the daughter. This is our culture. So we can decide whether it is good or bad based only on the culture. We cannot make a common statement for girls in all parts of the world. Kalam desam shruti vartamanam factors in that is Kal desh patra is really important to identify the effects of the Venus. Please make predictions based on this. Sometimes people say that there are some men who get attracted to even a tree when it is wrapped with the sari. It is said in order to express that how weak a man's mind is, how lustful the mind is. It is intended to say that such men are very crazy about girls. In such cases, Venus becomes Pabatva there. In case if Venus is in connection with Rahu, then there will be no pleasure from women or there will be a difference in the pleasure they receive or the person will not desire usual girls. In case if Venus is in connection with Saturn here, then the native will search for a girl who is of low dignity or girls of higher age, the older ones. They will prefer girls who are older than themselves. Each graha indicates different stages of human life such as kids age, teenage, adult age, middle age and old age. Because each planet says about a particular age. Moon is a young girl, Venus is a teen girl, Saturn is an old girl who lost youth, Mars is like a teen. Based on the conjunction of Venus and other planets, you can make accurate predictions. 
If Venus is in conjunction with Rahu, it says that the spouse will be a stranger based on the darkness of Rahu. When Venus is in conjunction with Rahu, the man searches for a girl who speaks a language other than his, not belonging to his race, not belonging to his religion, based on the degree of conjunction with Rahu or Ketu, or when Venus is in conjunction with Saturn. Please don't panic if the explanations that I give for certain combinations applies in your chart. I explain all these in order to make you understand the different significance of the planets and how the conjunction of different planets alters the significance. Just based on one point, you cannot make complete predictions. It depends on which bhava the Venus is connected to. The prediction will change based on which bhava it is. More importantly, you have to check if the person undergoes the major planetary period of Venus or Rahu if they are conjunct. I have explained this in higher astrology classes. If Venus and Rahu are in conjunction, the major planetary period of Venus will be bad and the major planetary period of Rahu will be good. Only during the major planetary period of Venus, the effects that I explained above will happen and during the major planetary period of Rahu, the effect will be given in reverse. Based on the significance of the planet, house effects, major planetary period, minor planetary period, bhava significance based on lagna, you have to make predictions. But many people can't make predictions as they get panicked. Many parents get concerned to see Venus and Rahu are in conjunction, Venus and Saturn are in conjunction and if they see so, they start to worry if their children will never enjoy marital pleasures. For example, in the natal chart of Mahaperiyava, Kanchi Kamakoti, I had written and explained that he is the one who is not aware of the pleasure of a woman at all. In the natal chart of Mahaperiyava, the Venus is exalted in Pisces and Venus was in conjunction with Rahu in Pisces. He was never aware of the pleasure of a woman. I had written a beautiful phrase that Mahaperiyava is an avatar who does not know any female energy except the goddess Kamachi. Venus was exalted in the 8th house in conjunction with Rahu and it was in the 8th house to the ascendant. Venus in the 8th house loses its strength to deliver the significance related to Jiva Karaga. In case, if the conjunction of Venus and Rahu was in a different house, not in the 8th house, then the effects will be different. You have to analyze a lot like the significance of the planet, house effect, etc. before making a final prediction. Don't go for hasty decision, glancing Venus and Rahu together, whether the person will get a foreigner or a stranger as a spouse. When Venus is in conjunction with Saturn but never undergoes the major planetary period of Venus, then you don't need to worry about it. In case if major planetary period of Venus happens, then you have to identify whether the sister gets affected or spouse gets affected or the ladies and close acquaintance will get affected or even if the mother gets affected because all these are women category. Please don't make hasty predictions just by an overview of the natal chart. This is the reason I explain all the intricacies in detail. This is the reason I explained about exalted Venus for a long time. I guess in the higher class of astrovision that happened before, I had explained all these. 
As I explained now, in the natal chart of Mahaperyava, Venus was in the 8th house and it lost its strength, thus losing the dignity to render the Jiva Karaga, that is the human significance of the planet. Since it was eclipsed by Rahu in the very same house, the great avatar Mahaperyava was never aware of the pleasure of a woman. He became an ascetic, a sannyasi and throughout his lifetime he followed the same principle and he lived like a god a maha avatar in a similar way you have to definitely identify with which planet the exalted venus is in conjunction the next step is to identify which houses are owned by those planets in the natal chart as per ascendant or rashi the venus should not be in conjunction with saturn rahu or mars if venus is in conjunction with mars then it will deliver carnal pleasures that are different than usual if they find a suitable partner with their taste and everything happens in a closed room nothing will be revealed to the outside world. It is nothing but how your spouse perceives you. Venus is meant for bed pleasures. When Venus is in conjunction with Mars, then it signifies a different taste in pleasure. As the next step, how the spouse will enjoy the carnal pleasures? You have to check the third house, seventh house, and 12th house. You will get further predictions when you analyze these houses. I have even published the natal chart of 13 or 14 years old girl as an example in whose natal chart Venus was in conjunction with Saturn in Aries. Generally when Venus is exalted in Pisces and has not got affected by any malefic, the native will get benefits from all the women. If you observe certain people, a guy would be there with fair complexion like actor Ajit or superheroes, but he will not be approached by ladies much. Whereas, this fair complexion guy or the good looking guy will have a friend who does not look good at all, but still be able to attract a lot of women who is around him. A lot of women will easily approach this guy who does not look handsome at all. The guy who is not in good form or the one who does not have better outlooks will attract a lot of women. He will not even mind wearing good clothes even if he will be wearing a rugged cloak still he can attract a lot of women. The women would like to approach the guy who does not look well who does not physically look well, whose outlook is not well, who is wearing very shabby dresses. In contrast to this, the women will not approach the guy who looks very handsome, who looks like a superhero. The reason behind all these paradoxes is the exaltation of Venus because a person in whose natal chart the Venus is exalted will protect the women. He is able to understand the feelings of women. The person will never take advantage of the women. When Venus is exalted in a man's natal chart, then he will take care of the women with great sincerity and care, but this will all go false if Venus gets affected. If Venus gets Pabatva by conjunction with Malafix or aspect of Malafix, then this will not be true. In this video, I have explained a lot about the nature of Venus and the effect of exalted Venus in the house of Pisces in different criteria. Since there is a need to explain the exaltation of Venus in the house of Pisces and it took a long time to explain because I am explaining about the house of Pisces also in this video. Therefore, for those whose Venus gets exalted without any Pabatva, in the house of Pisces, then they will live a very luxurious life 
and will not be affected much in their life. Even for the native of Sagittarius Ascendant and Pisces Ascendant, when Venus gets exalted here, then it will do worse effects through its house, but it will definitely deliver its significance. Because the major planetary period that the native of Pisces Ascendant and Sagittarius Ascendant should not undergo is Venus. Yet, when Venus gets exalted in the house of Pisces, it will definitely deliver its significance, but will deliver its worst effects through its house. Venus will deliver luxurious houses, luxurious vehicles and good spouse. Please try to understand the difference between the significance of the planet and the house effects of the planet. In my next video, I'm going to explain the theory of deflection of the greatest scientist, effects of Saturn, Rahu and Ketu in the house of Pisces. Needless to say, I'm going to share much more intricacies of astrology. Well, this is question time. Which planetary position and criteria will help a person to bless the lover or spouse who even breaks the relationship with him or her? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. The link to Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box which is available only for Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. And don't forget to write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.